Hello everyone. Nice to be on here this Tuesday for True Serum Tuesday. Tonight is all about trusting yourself and if you are um, a woman who has ever experienced some self-doubt or a limiting belief or even experienced a time when you were able to trust yourself and you felt really good about that, I hope that you will log on here. Hey, Margaret, I've been thinking about you. Good thoughts, good healing thoughts. But I hope you log on here so you can have some inspiration, so you can inspire other women to begin trusting themselves with some fierce confidence and trust. So before we get started, wow, you guys are like on here smack dab. How are you, Margaret? Please let us know um, because I have a lot of healing thoughts for you. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Tammy. Nice to have you. So thumbs up from Margaret. I'm so excited and so glad that you guys took time out for yourselves. And even if you're like Margaret and maybe you're stuck in bed and this is your thing, well, I am so glad that you decided to be here and that you are honoring yourself in this way. Hi, Dawn. So great to have you. Good. Margaret is doing amazingly well. I'm so happy. Lots of hugs. Well, maybe not hugs and kisses, but lots of hearts to you. Is this how you do like, like the heart thing? Okay. <laughs> anyway, so tonight we're going to talk about um, trusting ourselves. And one of the things I wanted to ask too, and even if you're not watching this live, but you're, I would appreciate your feedback. The summer is coming and up here, like in Northern California in Reading, it was a beautiful, beautiful day. And um, it gets stays lighter longer. And what I'm wondering is, uh, this is at 7.30 every Tuesday night. Um, I think I've missed one Tuesday and it was just because I was too sick to log on. But I would look forward to this and being with you brilliant women. And I was wondering if um, what you guys think about keeping it at the 7.30 time frame or whether you would rather like move it to eight o'clock because maybe you're out later maybe you're watching grandchildren um play baseball maybe you have your own kids that are playing sports and i want to make sure that i make it and put this about you in the time frame that fits you the best we can so if you'll put in the comments just the number um the time frame if you want to keep it at 7.30, just put 7.30 in the comments. So even if you're not watching live, please put your feedback in the comments about when uh, would be a good time. Is 7.30 still a good time? Or if we moved it to 8 o'clock, would that be a better time? Because I know that there's going to be times when um, I might be at the lake or I know some of you have other... Um, things that you're doing um, during the summertime and a lot of people travel. So um, I'm really looking forward to make this group that fits you. So your feedback is so appreciated. The, um, the other thing I want to say is if you live in the Redding, California area or surrounding areas, don't forget Girls Incorporated. I'm wearing my shirt today because today was volunteer day. And I'll tell you a little bit about that when it comes to trusting ourselves. Um, that they, we are bringing the Embrace um, documentary to the Cascade Theater. The tickets are only $10. It's going to be on April 21st. So you can go on Cascade, the Cascade Theater website, or I posted, maybe I'll repost, what I'll do is I'll repost the event so that you can um, go and buy tickets if you want. It's appropriate, they're saying, for girls 13 and up. There is some, just um, some some nudity about like uh, some breast cancer and some other things like that. So um, just know that that's there, but to go check that out. Um, and you can also look it up on YouTube. So before we get dive in, and I'm hoping today won't be as long, I'm wondering, oh, Tammy, I know Redding is missing you too. I'm just saying it's missing you. So Margaret says eight, eight thirty or nine would be best for me. Please make sure you put your comments about what times would be best for you uh, for the True Serum Tuesday, even if you're not watching. So, so important because I want to make this to where you guys can access it. And, and then you guys um, will be able to come and keep yourselves a priority. So we're trusting, we're talking about trusting ourselves today. And today I did my Girls Incorporated Facilitator, facilitator volu Volunteer work. And um, 
I, these are all middle school girls and I have consistently between seven and eight girls and middle school can be a really difficult time as maybe many of you know. Put a thumbs up or hearts if middle school was a diff difficult time for you or maybe your children. So I would put tons of hearts and thumbs up, <coughs> excuse me, because middle school was a difficult time for me. It's a really hard age to be. And um, I, I go in there sometimes not wondering if they're going to be kind of hyper and silly or if they're going to want to talk. And um, today I decided, I decided to trust myself and just yield into it and not go in with a specific necessary agenda, but to really listen to the girls and trust that I will know what I need to be doing at the time. So how many of you have ever walked into a situation that was really kind of unknown? You may have known a little bit about what was going to happen, but you didn't know everything or how it was gonna go. How many of you have ever walked into a situation like that? Thumbs up and hearts. Well, you're giving me your feedback, what, what was awesome about this is I just leaned into what I knew I could be doing. And, oh, Dawn's like, thumbs up, yeah. <laughs> and I asked the girls today, today was a day, we're planning an outing, I gave them the permission slip, and then I always bring a snack at the very end of the week. We do a drawing for the girls that have been there every single week. And then we kind of sit around and, and talk and I asked them what the best part of this group was. And all of the girls said that they like the group the best because they don't feel like they're judged. And this one um, girl said, you know, I really feel like I can be myself. Everywhere else, people call me silly or they call me stupid or they just think I'm crazy. But here, I don't have to worry about that. Another girl said, you know, everyone thinks I'm just a little girl. Everyone thinks I'm just a little girl, but I'm more than that. And in here, I can be more than that. So in those moments when I didn't know what was going to happen, if I didn't trust myself, those girls wouldn't have that space to express what they are truly feeling and how they can enjoy themselves, right? How they can learn to trust themselves in being a young woman that's trying to figure so many different things out, right? So I wanted to know, and this topic was brought to me today and honestly just kind of inspired because it seems like sometimes it's a challenge to trust ourselves. How many of you have ever felt challenged in really trusting yourself in making a choice? And making a choice as far as like, well, am I supposed to do this or am I supposed to do this other thing? And when we, um, when we attempt to trust ourselves and we get kind of burned. So how many of you have, have made a decision and you're like, oh, that wasn't a good decision? Let me know that too. So push the thumbs up in the hearts. And I'm not sure if there's some connectivity issues. I'm seeing some things go by. Um, but how many of you have ever felt like, oh, well, I made that decision and you, you immediately knew that it wasn't the right one for you? How many of you have ever felt kind of that sinking feeling and you followed through because you committed, but in the long run, you're like, why didn't I listen to myself? Maybe that's the question we ask ourselves more often than not, is why didn't I do this other thing? I knew, <coughs> excuse me, I knew what I, what I needed to do. So tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about, and what I'd love to hear from you, because all of you have taken time to be on here, is what is it that makes it sometimes so difficult for you to trust yourself. So sometimes it's fear, fear of the unknown, fear of your own self-confidence, your abilities to handle a situation. Maybe it's um, just not feeling like you're the one that should be making the decision. 
but you take on other people's stuff, so then you make the decision. So Margaret says miso misogyny. <laughs> I think that's how you say it. This is live, so I hope that's how you say it. <laughs> so what really has kept you from choosing your choice, the one that you knew within you? Sometimes, hey Karen, so I wonder why is it so difficult? Why is it sometimes so difficult to listen to ourselves, listen to our intuition, listen to the gut that is absolutely the second brain when it is sending us those signals through those nerves and we ignore this? Well, maybe we ignore it because someone else tells us to do something different. Dawn says fear. Yeah, fear can stop a lot of things. Fear can stop a lot of things. So, um, and maybe honestly, we've become or have patterns of behavior that have allowed other people to make decisions for us, right? Maybe we've just done what we've been told our whole lives and haven't had an ability to explore what is really true to us. And when I'm talking about this, my message underneath the foundational message is always the same. It always comes back to you on the inside. When we're looking for external people to make us feel like we've made a good choice, well, they don't live our lives, first of all. And so we may seek counsel from people and that may give us a reason to make a decision. And then if it doesn't turn out, we can just blame somebody else and not take full responsibility, right? Hey, Leslie, nice to have you. So, and the other thing to think about is, so we're not listening to ourselves. Maybe your choice would mean something about you. How many of you on here, how many of you brilliant women on here have felt like if you chose to say no, that would mean something about you? I've often chosen to make and say, make decisions or say things that don't include me always being the most popular person. And that was my choice. So when I'm choosing and I'm trusting myself in that moment, it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to get good responses from other people. What it means is that I'm getting a good response for myself. Because again, none of them live your life. And this is what a lot of people say, but none of them put lay down on your pillow at nighttime and have to be in here. So people feel judged. People feel like they need to have other people's guidance because we don't listen and because maybe that would mean something about you. So maybe if you have a difficult time making a choice, you need to say, what would this mean about me if I made this choice? And is that true? Is that the reality? Okay, so maybe you are focused on the decisions that you've made in the past. How many of you have made a bad decision and now you're gun shy? Not literally like gun shy, but now you're like, oh, well, I don't even know what to choose now. I've chosen this thing in the past and it's always come to bite me in the butt. So that can cloud our judgment. That can have us be in a place where we feel like that is going to be us again. And if you make the same decision as you made before, exactly the same decision, in the exact same circumstance, you very well might get the exact same result. How many of have you have done something over and over and over again and you continue to get the same result? And every single time you're unsatisfied with the result. So when we have, remember we're talking about neurological connections. We're talking about neural pathways that say this instance or this emotion equals this instance. And so I'm never going to do this, have this emotion again, but that's not true, right? Those are your past experiences. If you dare to choose differently, like we did a challenge and daring to choose differently before, you will not get the exact same result. 
you won't. It's impossible to get the exact same result. So what do you have to lose? What is your risk? So if you're focused always on the past, that creates regret, resentment, and fear that it will happen again in the future, right? So how many of you are getting what I'm saying? I'm just looking down at my notes here. How many of you are absorbing this and it's meaning something to you? How many of you are be being able to relate to the topics or the ways of being and not being able to trust yourself. Now, when you are not able to trust yourself, you will have opportunities to learn to trust yourself. How many of you have had opportunities to continue to learn and and receive the messages on how you want to be living. So if you haven't learned what you needed to learn, it will continue to smack you, smack dab in the forehead every time. The same issue will come up, the same issue. And if I keep saying no, 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 the minute I say yes, I can move through the issue. The minute I trust myself, the minute I know that I'm going to be able to handle whatever comes my way, the minute I know how I am from the inside out, not from the outside in, but the minute I know that, then I can handle anything that comes my way. So how many of you have had that experience? How many of you have been hit in the forehead over and over and over again? Margaret says over and over and over, LOL. And then you choose differently and then all of a sudden it's whoosh, like smooth sailing. Stephanie says living with intention helps ident identify logistics and trust the plan. Yeah. Yeah, so living with intention is how, as, as a woman, as myself, do I want to interact in the world? The more you trust yourself, the more you know yourself, the more you will move through life the way you want to move through life. Now, I'm not talking selfish in, in these kind of ways, like, oh, well, I'm doing this and I don't care about anybody else. Like, so let's get that out of the way. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is living this authentic life to you, no matter what anyone else thinks about it. I mean, anyone, no matter, because you will be happier. You will live a more fulfilled life, right? So it keeps coming back and back and back. And the second, the other thing, not second, I've talked like about six things. So the last thing is, is how do we tune in? How do we tune in to get to know our bodies? Not only our minds, because we can be in our minds a lot. That's how our culture works. Being in our mind, figuring things out, moving on, doing action, but not sitting and listening, all right? Sitting and listening is an action. So maybe, maybe you can try that action. <laughs> maybe that would be helpful to get to know what you are truly capable of because whatever you need is already within you. It's just been covered up by other experiences, past experiences, doubt. Dawn says true about living an authentic life. Yeah, it is true about finding. And I know living an authentic life, oh, has been like this thing that people are saying now. But for me, it is really truly the way I live. It is my thing. And I don't take it as just this other thing that's just out there in a um, gimmicky kind of way. Margaret says, that's kind of all I can do right now is sit and listen. Hmm. And I wonder why your body is asking you to sit and listen, right? It's that thing that smacks a dab in the forehead every single freaking time. And you're like, enough, enough. Okay. So are you guys willing to do an activity with me? Well, not really an activity, but... I want to do a body kind of like checking in with your body. Are you guys willing to do that? Put a thumbs up and a heart if you're willing to do that. And if you're not listening to this live, I would encourage you to do this same thing while you're on here listening. Karen says, I tend to listen to others rather than listen to myself. You know, Karen, only you know. No one else knows as well as you. Margaret says, yes. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to do. We're gonna do a little teeny bitty exercise about getting in tune with yourself. So I want you to take a moment, listen to my voice. <laughs> that sounds funny. Um, so you can close your eyes. So just take a moment to close your eyes. And just settle into wherever you're sitting, whether you're laying down maybe, or sitting upright or laying back in a recliner, whatever. Just settle in 
And I want you to take a brief, deep breath, breathing in through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. So just inhaling and really like giving yourself a breath, like, and then releasing it. And then one more time, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. And right now, I want you to think of a time in your life or imagine a time in your life or view back to a time in your life where you made a decision that wasn't, um, where you didn't, where you weren't able to trust yourself and you just chose something without kind of looking within, um, that didn't really work out for you. So the choice, it didn't really work out for you and you knew that it wasn't working out for you. The minute you, you made the choice, you knew it wasn't the right one for you. And I want you to take a moment and I want you to feel that in your body. Drop down from the head, taking this and feeling these feelings of knowing when you made a choice that wasn't the right one, where does it resonate in your body? And I just want you to note that and just sit with it for a second. Just noticing how the breathing has now become rhythmic. And now I want you to take a moment and travel back up towards the head. And I want you to think of a time when you made a choice and you felt confident, like this fierce confidence about that choice. You knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that that was the right thing for you at the right time. No doubt, no hesitation, you knew. Go down now, dropping down into your body from the head, and I want you to find where that feeling is in your body. Just continuing to breathe. Note where you feel this in your body, this feeling of assurance this feeling of, I don't know how else to say it, just this knowing, this fierce knowing, this divine knowing. Take a moment to feel that and note where you feel it in your body. And just sit in this space just for another few seconds. Okay, so now I want you to travel back up towards the head, taking a, a breath, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth. And becoming more present into the room or into the space where you're at. Just inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth. And then fully becoming present back into this space where you're at here on this Facebook Live. And what I'd love to hear from you is the different places where you felt the time when you made, where you felt it in your body, the time that you made a choice that you knew wasn't the right choice for you, and the time when you made this absolute, awesome, kick-ass, knowing, fierce, confident choice for you. Let me know in the comments where you felt both of those. Because what will be interesting to witness from each of you, what will be interesting for you, for you to witness with each other is if sometimes you may feel it in the same spaces of, the, of your bodies. I know when I make a decision that I know is absolutely for me, my lungs become expansive. I feel this opening up like this is it. I know, no doubt. Right, so Margaret said, bad choice, gut, good choice, heart. Awesome. Uh, Leslie said, chest for both. Interesting, Leslie, interesting for chest for both. Dawn, in your gut for both? Yes? Let me know. So, Leslie, wondering the bad choice, if is it like anxiety, like <sighs> not a good choice? And the good choice is slow breathing? Or is it heart, Leslie? Tell me, get a little bit, find out, um, see if you can't define that a little more. And Don, just again, is it in both? 
So whoever else is watching this and it's and you're and it's not live, you're not watching live, please make sure to let us know, know on here because when we can know we're not the only ones, it is a powerful connected way of being. So Stephanie said bad choice heart, good choice in the diaphragm and belly. Interesting. Don says bad choice gut. Mm. Yeah. Good choice is heart. Yes. So that's really important, right? To define where they come from. Because then when you can know these things about you, your body somatically remembers and you get a message, right? Our bodies are beautifully and wonderfully made. They have been made like this. God has given us these bodies and these things enable us to live a better life, right? So, all right. I want you to be able, Tammy says, bad gut, good heart. Interesting, love it. So interesting, a lot of good is in the heart. Wait, heart is this side, I'm opposite of you guys. You know, a lot of it's in the heart. So really know that this is a space for each of you where you can feel some connectedness, some feminine, honestly, some feminine strength is in the heart. We are powerful, right? Our hearts are powerful. Our compassion is powerful to ourselves and to other people. So how many of you think that you can do this little exercise when you're in the middle of making a choice? So the way you adapt it is you say, what choice is best for me? Okay. This is going to be a silly one, but I'm going to just put it as an example. Is the choice to eat a piece of chocolate cake best for me? Or is the choice um, to drink a fresh juice that I just made with apples, celery, grapes, or whatever? Right. So when you feel that in your body, your body somatically begins to remember. So every time you make a decision, you can make it from a part in your body and know instantly what is the decision for you. Right? You're tuning in. You tune back in. Margaret says, totally going to try this. Yes, because the more you get to know you, the more you get to know your truth, the more you trust yourself, the more you operate with fierce confidence and freedom. Right? So if you're willing to give this a try, people other than Margaret, I got to type on my computer before it goes out. Uh, people, Margaret already did. Karen says, I like it. Right. So simple. You can always find this video. Fast forward through all the other stuff we talked about. Do this little exercise. And then you can make this a part of your routine where you can access instantly anywhere. Okay. So I want to encourage each one of you to practice this when you can, it only took us just maybe like three to five minutes, literally tuning into your body, asking yourself these questions, trusting your divine knowing. Trust, trust. You are the one that knows the best. So I have this quote. Let me reach it for it really quick. Okay. I have this quote that I um, looked up about trust or trusting yourself or believing kind of in yourself and your capabilities. So, is anyone else going to commit to this? Margaret says she's going to try it. Karen says she's liking it. Karen says she's going to do it. Anyone else? Anyone else going to commit? So then you guys can know. Here's the quote. A bird sitting in a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking. Because her trust is not on the branch, but on her own wings. Okay, Dawn says she's going to try it. So listen to this again. A bird sitting, it says, A bird sitting in a tree is never afraid of the branch breaking because her trust is not on the branch, but it's in her own wings. Always believe in yourself. <coughs> trust you. Don't trust the external environment. Come back within, from within, always from within, how you want to be interacting in this world as a woman, how you want to be relating to other people as whatever roles that you have. You decide, you choose, trust in yourself always. Consistency brings consistent action, right? When you're acting consistently in one way, then you can have that over and over and over and over again. Oh, good. Don, I'm glad you like it. So, 
Take what you've got tonight. I'm so appreciative for you being here. I'm so proud that each one of you took your time, your precious time, because I know you're all busy. I know you all have things to do and you put yourself first. You trusted that you wanted to be here and you are here. So I hope that you can take something away from this True Serum Tuesday that will inspire you so that you can continue to inspire others and make the positive impact that you want to make. So I love you all and I really look forward to seeing you next True Serum Tuesday, which is next Tuesday. Let me know if you have any suggestions too. Would love to hear what some of the things you guys want um, to know about. Oh, one more thing. I don't know if any of you saw it. I know Margaret saw it, but I'm offering some free 45 minute coaching sessions to fill out um, some questions for a survey because I'm looking to reach more women and have a larger impact. So your input is going to help me do that. It's totally free and there's no sales pitch attached to that. So I will honor my word and I will help you realize or gain some insight and give you a couple tools that you can be using in order for you to continue to walk through life. If you don't want to have the 45 minute coaching session and you would love to fill out the survey, um, I would appreciate that too. Um, and then you can just let me know what you, um, whether you want the coaching session or not. So thank you so much. I appreciate you. And I look forward to seeing all of you next Tuesday on True Serum Tuesday. Bye. Mwah.